Hi, my name is Mike, and this is my thesis project, Adirac. I got my undergrad degree in graphic design before working at Carhartt for five years. At Carhartt, I learned all about the outdoor industry and product design. I got to put together camo patterns, buttons, products, hats, all sorts of things, so I really got an insight into what a clothing company looks like. After that, and since then, for the last four years, I've been working at Northwest Nazarene University, teaching undergrad graphic design and web design, along with running the art gallery on campus. The concept for my project is an outdoor company, and the big feature about it is an interactive guidebook. Now, other clothing companies have lookbooks and things like that that are a little more inspirational, and they're really cool and they're fun, but where ours differs is it gets into the products and the giving and the company narrative in a more technical sense and in an interactive sense. Users will be able to click through and on different sections of the product to see different views and how it actually works. So it'll be a more interactive walkthrough of our products. Now, the problem is there's a diminishing funding for art, music, and shop programs. Through government cuts over the years, these programs of art, music, and shop are often cut first. The solution? is to create a company that gives back a portion of its revenue to these programs. I've broken down the target audience description into three sections, primary, secondary, and tertiary. The primary target audience values quality, and they value quality over cheap products. They really appreciate nature. They might not go out every weekend to go skiing and hiking, but they really like nature. They also value education. Our secondary audience really likes the outdoors. Again, probably a little less of the outdoor enthusiasts, but they like the idea of getting outdoors and they like to be in nature. Tertiary audience is someone who's looking for something different. I've identified three user profiles and user personas that really encapsulate who the customer of Adirac is. Rhonda, at 54, is a great example of a woman, a mom, and a wife who is active in the outdoors goes to sporting events, and values good quality products. She says, I need something that looks good. It also needs to last through all the areas of life for which I am a part. Rhonda loves to give back to the community and to her grandkids to see them succeed in the future. Ben is 38. Ben wants quality. He wants well-made products. He's independent. He runs his own business, and he works to play. Ben says, I'm more interested in things lasting and making an impact. Ben knows he's going to need clothing and water bottles and other things in life to have fun and go on adventures, and he wants them to last, and he wants to know that that company is caring about future generations. Kylie is 31, and she's our free spirit. She loves the arts. She has friends who are teachers. She has friends who are musicians, and she tells people she's artsy. She loves to do yoga, and she loves to mountain climb. She says, when you're in nature, you are one with your creative self. Kylie loved taking art and music in, um, in high school, and she wants to give that opportunity back to students. I've highlighted three use case scenarios that outline the major features of this site. The first one we're going to have Ben walk through. He wants to find, about, find out about the inspiration behind our t-shirts. Step one, he uses his phone and he starts on the home page. Ben clicks on the interactive guidebook on the home page. He starts off in the first section of the guidebook about uh, featuring the company story. As he scrolls through the guidebook, he learns about company giving. After giving is the third section of products, where Ben can view product inspiration, details, photos, and colors. Throughout the whole guidebook, Ben can navigate to each section about giving and product easily with a timeline-based menu at the bottom of the screen. Ideally, I would love to have someone like Ben scroll through every single page, but if they want to jump to a different section of the guidebook, they can do so at the bottom timeline menu. Our second use case is with Kylie. She wants to find out about how our company gives back. On her phone, Kylie starts on the home page. Then she clicks the hamburger menu on the top left. She clicks on giving, from there, she's guided through an explanation of why Adirac gives to art, music, and shop. Kylie sees that we give back 20% of our proceeds to education. 
The last use case is the longest and has the most steps because it's the most sensitive and needs to be the most secure. Rhonda wants to find out more information about our water bottle and make a purchase. Rhonda starts on the home page. She clicks on the store button. Step three, after the page loads, she clicks on the water bottle. Step four, she selects the quantity and clicks add to cart. Step five, the system adds the quantity of water bottles to the cart. Six, Rhonda then clicks on the checkout button. Step seven, the system asks the user if they would like to proceed as a guest or sign in. Rhonda signs up with the username and password. Step nine, the system creates her account and compiles her order for her. Step 10, she enters her credit card address and shipping information. Then she clicks order and she's done. On step 12, the system logs an order the order and sends an email to Adirac where we can process the shipping. After the order is processed and simultaneously, Rhonda sees a confirmation message on the next screen. There are options to shop, go to the homepage, and read more about education. This process is the longest because it needs to be the most secure, and I've tried to model this after other buying processes that I've seen through this class and other classes when researching Amazon, Tom's, Hydroflask, and other companies where you the last section of my presentation is the sitemap. In this sitemap, I've redone it many times. I've tried to look at different companies that are similar to mine and that are different. I've looked at Hydroflask and Tom's and Warby Parker to see how their store is set up, how their about page and about section lives within their website. Then with Tom's and Warby Parker and other altruistic companies, I've really taken a look at how they're giving back uh, and their news and blog sections fit into their overall site. Then I've looked at other fashion companies uh, and product companies that have some sort of lookbook or guidebook and tried to structure mine in a similar way, yet still being different. So on the home page, we'll have a call to action, an Instagram feed, reviews, and our cause. Then in the store, we'll have all of our products. In the about section, we'll have more detailed information about who we are, our history, and our philosophy. In the giving back section will be more about our cause, our current giving, and then other programs similar to ours that are also making an impact. Our guidebook talks all about Adirac, the name origin, giving to all three programs of shop, art, and music, and then goes into more detailed information about our products. Then we'll have a news section with articles about education and education cuts. And then in our blog, we'll have creative education highlights Highlights from people who have taken classes in high school and still remember taking music and art and shop classes and want to call those out. And then we'll also have creative teacher highlights. I've put a lot of things into the sitemap and taken a lot of things away. I want to add enough information that gives to this website and gives it structure, but doesn't add fluff and unnecessary information. One of those pieces of information is outdoor tips and articles and things like that. I thought it might be a necessary thing and add, but at the end of the day, from feedback I received and the more I looked at it, it was too overwhelming and got into an area that I didn't want to see it get into. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it, and I really look forward to hearing about your feedback.